Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Bold Creatives Collective podcast. I am so excited that I get to hang out and you get to hang out today with me and Jordan Princiata. I am so happy to have her here uh, to talk about all different kinds of things. When I heard about Jordan's story from one of my one of my friends, um, I just had to reach out to her because like me, um, she had an interesting experience when she was going to art school and decided to make some decisions for herself, which I think we can all um, learn from, if not kind of fully embrace and make big decisions um, that propel us forward um, in ways that maybe we would never think that we would make. Because anyway, I don't want to get too far into it, but I just wanted to say I'm excited. Um, Jordan, welcome to the podcast. Uh, can you give everybody an idea of who the hell you are and um, and what you're about? Yeah, definitely. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, 23, live in New York, crazy city, uh, scary. <laughs> um, right now, I'm a fashion designer for a I'm a unisex upcycled brand, so uh, my life is pretty different. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm trying to move into installation art, but right now I'm really sticking with this fashion, seeing where it takes me. Um, yeah. Yeah. When you and I, when you and I talked a few weeks ago, you were telling me about all of the different things that you kind of had brewing up in your mind about where you wanted to take your work in the future. Um, but really also enjoying where it is now. And something that I really um, liked hearing from you is that you're really embracing, you know, each step in your journey and kind of seeing where the next kind of, the next step takes you, right? This isn't something that you're maybe thinking too far out into the future um, you have some general ideas but you're really just going with what is presented in front of you and I think yeah, that that true. is maybe a link to um, your your broader story of how you even got to the point of starting to design for fashion yeah let me kind of give you the whole background and story yeah. so can kind of understand what the journey was yeah. and hopefully people can relate uh so you know graduated high school did community college for a year just to get my college basics and then hopped right into art school and I was so excited art school like I'm an artist you know I've been doing it forever since I was little I was painting and stuff like that so I was super stoked um and my first year was great but Already, I felt like I was hitting the ceiling in a weird way. I was like, hmm, this stuff, I'm, I'm moving faster than the classes. I'm moving faster than the students. So I'm getting bored. Uh, so, you know, I started to become multiple. I feel like everyone has the ability of multiplicity and they don't have to that. stick to one subject or learning. So I was like, let me touch something else. So uh, like end of freshman year into sophomore year, I started to design clothes and I was, it was a thrill. I was so excited about it. Um, I started getting into shows. I started selling. I started meeting people outside of school that benefit me. And you know, your art school at the end of the day to me, I feel like it's just a networking opportunity. You know, you might be great at what you're doing. You might need to learn the whole full course, but right. at the end of the day, you're networking. You're trying to see who you can meet that can bring you further in your career. Yeah. Um, but I was meeting that outside of school and a lot of students were waiting for those opportunities when they graduate. I was like, no way. We got to hop on it now. <laughs> wow. um, so, yeah, I started just working outside of school and it really gave me that passion for fashion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I, once I started getting kind of my style down and my right. processes, I wanted to go right to my textile professor, um, Dean professor. Uh, she was great. I, she inspired me so much and taught me a lot when it comes to textile processes. So I shared it with her. I'm like, Hey, uh, outside of this class, not like I was failing or anything. I was like, I'm making clothing. I want you to check it out. Tell me how you feel. Yeah, sure. And knowing the person she was, I thought she would have been excited, but 
totally wrong. She looked at my clothes and told me straight to my face how this was a hobby and it was not important and school is important and I should only focus on the courses and what you're learning in school and nothing outside of it broke me down I right. was just like shocked I was like right it's this is still something creative you know you right. shouldn't really be shooting me down like this um right and it sounds like <laughs> it was just it was it was just a super invalidating moment for you right it didn't yeah. it, the way you tell the story you know, doesn't sound like it was feedback given to you for any particular educational reason. Like, you know, maybe you should think about these things before you head out into doing those things. It was more like, oh, this is, you know, what are you doing? This is a hobby. Why aren't you focusing on this? Like it just, maybe the delivery was just super shitty, right? And and really deflated you pretty significantly mm -hmm. I felt I felt I remember that day I felt horrible it was just like yeah hey is she right should I stop doing this I was making so much money I was uh being accepted in all these fashion shows and once I got accepted into a bigger fashion show that's when the school <laughs> literally hit the fan well all of a sudden they see you as a potential like early success story right where they can start like taking your story and saying look what our students are doing our students are doing x y and z out sure. here you know and this is why you should come to our school so as soon as you start making those connections for them well then it's a different it's a different sure. tune that they're humming right yeah they love to use and abuse students so <laughs> with when it comes to art right. so um yeah, you know, I didn't want to get in my way, though. I was like, whatever. She is miserable. Obviously, she's still in school, like not happy, whatever. So I kept going. You know, I didn't yeah. let it be told my friends about it. And as I kept growing in this fashion industry, um, I started to get more bigger opportunities. And I was selling more everything was just I was really hitting that fan when yeah. uh that ceiling when it came to like school so uh before the pandemic I got the opportunity to showcase in Atlantic City Fashion Week I did the one designer of the year it was so cool um but it wasn't really something I bragged about in right. the sense did you you know you always got to be humble sure. um so after that I got another opportunity to be in Philly Fashion Week which would interrupt my school schedule uh -huh. so you know, she's not gonna like this already I can tell right no oh my god hell no so you know I'm a respectful student I treat people how they should be treated whatever no matter how high up they are uh so I was real I was like hey I got this opportunity to showcase in Philly Fashion Week I need these days off I will get my work done ahead of time and this is just to her it was to multiple professors and deans mm -hmm. and you know you would think, wow, one of our students is doing something creative outside of school. That's a big deal. Fuck yeah. Right. No. Every professor and dean did not believe me. They thought I was lying. They thought I was trying to get days off. They were yeah, just somehow like, trying to like skirt around your responsibilities in school by by making up the story that you're going to be showing yeah. your work you know, in, in the was, fashion week. That was another, I just got shot down again. I'm like, but uh -huh. I was just so positive and so excited for this opportunity. I, I did not give a fuck. Right. I was like, cool. Don't believe me, but I'm not going to be here. And that's all I can do. Right. Um, so the show went on. It was amazing. I sat down with the executives of Paper Magazine. I met a lot of people from uh, the Bravo. What was that show? The Runway Show on Bravo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I'm sure. I'm sure we know it. Uh, yeah. and Runway Show on Bravo. We'll just go yeah, with that. Something like that. Yeah. You met people. I, you met people associated with that show. Yes. Um. And they were gonna. They wanted to cast me. I was. They were after the meeting. They were like, we want to maybe move forward. So all it was. I was on a high. I was like, wow, left yeah. and what school? I don't even need school. And then um the pandemic happened. Uh-huh. Right. Of course it affected everybody. Um, but especially for school, you know, we're art school. We totally went online 
And after the fashion show and the whole whatever, we're online now. And people keep seeing these articles. People keep seeing these videos of me. And there was one professor that was curious. And she was like, how was the the fashion show? I go, it was great. Like, I'm so glad I did it, blah, blah, blah. And all these professors that didn't believe me start apologizing to me. Wow. They were like, uh, we are so sorry. We didn't think this was real. We thought you were just trying to get out of class. And it's so weird. Over. Yeah. I know it would be different if I was failing, but I did everything on time and I did it well, you know? Right. Like I don't mess around with work. Um, so yeah, I was getting apologies left and right. Professors were like jealous and it was a very, I trusted my gut. I was like, I don't care what my peers have to say around me right now. This is my right. journey. And if you're here to support me, you're supporting me. If you don't, that's that's on you. I can't right. really stop and get affected by it. So, you know, it kind of, after their apologies and stuff, I was like, I'm out of here. I right. don't want to go to school anymore. And right. ever since then, I never regretted it, you know? Right, right. Um, because you, you knew through your experimentation of adding things into your life, even while you were a student, right? Like I liked that term that you use, like I was going to, I'm going to become multiple, multiplicity, right? Like I'm going to start like getting my hands into different things that, you know, I want to learn more about, or I already have some knowledge about, and I'm going to start seeing what happens. And I actually think that this is a really important aspect of being an art student, right? And the, and the, the supposed uh, benefits and opportunities that art students have, right? Because it's a very different type of experience, college or university experience than someone who's going to major in something more, um, I don't know, traditional or what you would expect, yeah. <laughs> right? A more linear or kind of no the path laid out for you experience. Yeah. When you go into a, a school like you went into, at least there's this sense or this exp- or even a perception that the students are going to be, you know, learning and then taking and applying. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's what you did. And I think what, what you have that not everybody has really to the extent that it sounds like you do is a self-starting kind of um, engine in you that, that, that kind of is revving and you're like, I gotta, I gotta like propel myself forward here. And so all that was culminating. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you're not a little kid, but like, you're a kid who goes to, you're a kid who goes to like, at the time anyway, especially goes to like the parent, which is the professor and says, look what I'm doing. I'm so excited about this. Right. Can like, I need some validation or some affirmation. Right. And then it wasn't, it wasn't given to you. Right. But inside you were saying, I know in my gut that this is a direction that makes sense for me right now. And I can't let different things get in my way Mm -hmm. to stop me from seeing if this is, if this is real for me or not. Yeah. Right. I mean, can you talk a little bit about what it's like to, trust your gut you know from your perspective what is that like for you yeah I mean listen I feel like we all have to trust your gut in some way if you're in a dangerous situation if you're meeting someone new you know you always have that boundary up right Um, but you have to trust your gut and yourself to move forward to break that boundary to get past that and to figure out what path you can take so for me when it comes to trusting my gut I I kind of blur out everything and, Mm. and like question myself and sit with myself and be like, all right, what's going on? Yeah. Is this, I'm a very impulsive person. So whenever my uh, my gut is making some kind of feeling, I'm like, yes, Yeah. (laughs) I, you know, you have to trust yourself. Right. So, um, you know, when I have that feeling, I sit down, I try to evaluate and I go forward, you know, that is, I don't know if it's someone spiritual world or if it's just your brain being the smart brain it is being like this is how your life should be right I always stick with it I always like you you know this is your life and how your body is telling you um that should be the okay to proceed in whatever path it's telling you right you know? 
right it's really important um i feel like people ignore it a lot because they're trying to fit in the norm they're trying to accommodate what's around them but no fuck that mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. need to follow what your body's saying to succeed yeah. and get where you have to be in yeah. any aspect not just art anything so i like that i think yeah. you're you're bringing up some really good points in terms of you know understanding and listening for I guess you listen first and then understand listening for, and then understanding what your purpose is, right. And where you want to go. Right. I think so many people are, uh, especially in our, in our world right now, right. Still trying to shed the preconceived notions of what is supposed, what is supposed to be, what life is supposed to be, what the outcomes are supposed to look like. And they're running around trying to get somewhere, but they don't even know where they're supposed to be yet or where they want to be. Right. So they always feel like they're not hitting the mark um, or they're always kind of lost and and searching. Or is what you're telling me is that you have a, an ability to listen to your, your mind, your body, your spirit kind of sense that there's a pull. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you follow that impulse, but you're also not saying that you just immediately jump into the deep end, you know, without considering potential issues or challenges, right? You're saying, I listen to my gut, I hear it, I feel it, and then I think about it and consider some things. And then with all of that information that I'm putting together and that I'm receiving, I then take action on it. Yeah. But what I'm not doing is letting all of the voices from outside contaminate that process for me. You said yeah. that I like blur it. I blur it out. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Right? Yeah. And, you know, there has been some cases where I don't listen to my gut. You know, it's I'm not ready. I, I can't. Okay. This move. For example, like when. I knew as soon as Lee, when I dropped out of school, I was like, all right, I'm done in Philly. You know, I've met all the people I can meet, professional, already established people that are starting. I helped out. I talked to too many people. I'm hitting the ceiling. Where can I go next? Yeah. And my gut's like, Barcelona. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I, let's let's educate my, my gut feeling a little bit better. Uh, let's take yeah. it. I'm not in a financial position yet to just move. Let's stay for a couple more months. Let's figure this out. But I did have that first initial, okay, you need to move on somehow. And that's if in a different career, a different place, a different surrounding, you Mm -hmm. need to figure this out. That's that initial let's go. (laughs) Yeah. That's also really insightful. And I think a lot of people who will hear this conversation, I think can, would do well to to hear what you just said again and I'll kind of paraphrase it you said yeah. you said my gut told me that we can't be here anymore we need to go to barcelona and you said to yourself whoa let's slow <laughs> down and and let's educate my gut you said mm-hmm. and that's really important right what is your gut actually saying in that moment that it wants to take you to barcelona mm-hmm. right yeah barcelona is awesome and amazing and beautiful oh, and like all the things right but yeah. is your gut actually saying there let's move to barcelona or is it saying we need something to shift here in a pretty major way and and what and then you can decipher you know once you start asking yourself questions based on that impulse you know what that shift is right and slow yourself down a bit Mm -hmm. I think that's really important yeah if people want to start trusting themselves and trusting their gut more don't I'm like I said I'm impulsive so sometimes I do jump the gun I'm like yes let's do it but sure. someone who is trying to, you know, understand that process more, I would like suggest educate it. You know, you have that feeling, you know where to go, you know where, what you want to do, but just like take it back for a second, make it like on your reachable goal list. 
Um, right. Jump the gun, especially if this is a new process for you. You know. Right. Like yeah, everyone... it's not to say that Spain is not in your future, for example. Oh, right? I'm going there. Yes, I'm going there. <laughs> right. So you don't throw it away and say that's a stupid idea, yeah. right? But you say let's back it up a little bit yeah. and take a look at what steps might be before we land in in Spain. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Just try overall just try to trust yourself in general not in and moves like i said in danger you know you mm -hmm. you're important and yeah. you need to yeah. always kind of follow your instincts you know yeah because there are a lot of people in the world there are, well there first of all there's a lot of people that are going to support you and that are going to cheer you on and that are going to validate you. and affirm right yeah. those people totally exist right but there are also a lot of people in the world and because of how we're we're kind of wired as human beings, the people in the world who want to uh, cause us to second guess or want to kind of tell us how they had similar ideal ideal ideas, um, idealistic ideas, and they failed at them. And that was really like all those people, because of the way we are as human beings, we tend to listen to those things much more loudly. Um, or hear them much more loudly than we hear the, you know, affirmations and the validations and the support. And it is a really important practice to learn how to synthesize or filter out all of the voices or filter yeah. in all of the voices and out all, all the stuff yeah. that isn't important so that you can really have a fuller picture, yeah. right? Because maybe there are some, there are some, um, like, uh, little nuggets of important information or learning that you can take from the naysayer group of course. right yeah and then maybe there are some people who are super idealistic and like not really like tethered to any kind of reality in the support group right and so all of those things come in and you have to kind of learn how to edit them out so that you can make and educate, like you were saying, your gut, right? To make the best decision that you can make for yourself. Yeah. Um, so it's not canceling out anyone necessarily, but it's learning how to like blur things and kind of quiet things down so that you can actually get a clear picture of what you need and need to do. 100%. Yeah. Um, and I go through that. I, I go through that all the time, to be honest. And I feel like media does not help at all. Like when I have a time for decision making and I go on like Instagram or Twitter, it's just like, it's more voices in my head that I didn't need at all. You know, right. you, I, as an escape and it's just like, no, nope, we're going to yeah. make you rethink your whole life. But when yeah. I was deciding to jump out of school, I had those, I had the, those people around me that were like, what are you doing? This is great. No, you're going to get nowhere. Oh my gosh. You don't even need college. So it was just like a sandwich. Yeah. Um, it's like this back and forth whiplash scenario, right? You have one conversation at lunchtime with someone who's like, yeah, do it. Right. And then at dinner, by dinner time, you've like run into another person who thinks you're insane. But listen, the world is on your side. If you don't think it is, it always is. So you'll get your different affirmation somewhere else, you know, from not from a person. Like the other day, oh, I'm I'm scared for this new job. I opened up a fortune cookie and it was like, stop being scared, bitch. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <You> <laughs> that's know? exactly like, that's what I needed today. I needed. Right? Yeah. So people will say things regardless, positive or negative, but, but I feel like things around you will will say what it needs to move forward like yeah. what you need to hear so yeah don't rely on people too much <laughs> right right I want to kind of spend a little bit of time on the idea of being a leader in yeah. the creative world a lot of your own personal development that you've been talking about and that all of us have just been learning about from you um is I think about developing the ability to to lead in mm -hmm. the creative environment or the creative marketplace, whatever it is. Um, so when you think about being a leader in the creative world yourself, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you define that creative leadership? So yeah, like my end goal as a creative is to be a leader. So it's something I'm kind of practicing every day. I'm in a job right now besides my fashion where I am a leader. I'm, you know, 
uh, people are under under me to create a team um so my what i want in the creative leadership future is that it is a team you know i don't want competition anymore i want to kind of break that boundary mm. and to let artists understand we're all one you know we all should be supporting each other we all should be helping each other out yeah. working together and listen the best will float at the, the cream will float at the top you know right um, but it shouldn't be about that you know we make art for expression for freedom throughout the regular world and i i feel like artists should work together you know there shouldn't be those copycats there shouldn't be like competition and stuff it's just a stereotype that has been there for too long yeah you know so one of and the ways that like you one of the ways that you envision being a leader is through your influence uh, to break down these kind of competitive barriers really yeah. that that have that hinder really the ability to then be the best creative that you can that someone yeah. can possibly be when we're when we're so focused on winning right or getting ahead of that other person that looks like they're doing better than us yeah. in that moment how stifling is that right to your creative process right it's horrible. yeah it's horrible yeah right? um yeah but i've learned through however whatever that working with someone working visually with someone or just talking to someone in the creative world does help your work yes and you don't have to necessarily create the same thing together but the opinions because you're both educated on the artist world mm -hmm. it helps you you know and it's positive and mm -hmm. it makes you want to create so right. as, like as a leader i i would love that i would love to show people that it doesn't have to be a competition anymore right you know we're all, right. We're all doing the same thing right just right <laughs> well in just the same way that competition erodes creativity yeah right? um unhealthy competition like you know cut that person off at the knees kind of competition yeah. mm -hmm. um erodes creativity relationships on the other hand and dialogue and uh, mentorship and partnerships fuel creativity uh -huh. right without yeah. dialogue without relationship without feedback right the create the creative um product mm -hmm. may not be fully realized right because you're not kind yeah. of putting it out there to have to have feedback on and to build off of one another and in that way yeah. right instead of being competition right between this person's work and your work right yeah. you're then in dialogue where you're informing each other's work and you're helping each other grow um and you can celebrate each other's successes and support one another when there are challenges or disappointments along the way yeah. and that's a much more powerful thing mm -hmm. than you know just going at it your own and hoping that you land where you want to land yeah. um and everybody else like falls apart at the finish a hundred percent you put it in really great words because i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like hmm, how can i make this sound better and you did it uh a hundred percent um yeah but hopefully you know that's the future me's problem right now i kind of have to get there mm -hmm. and i'm working towards it and i'm hoping to be in the next for some reason weird gut thing at 25 i'm going to have i'm going to kind of get into that leadership role nice nice um, so you're like i'm here right now but in a in a little bit when once i hit 25 then that'll be the time where i can where i would have shifted or will be shifting into this new, mm -hmm. new space where i can actually lead in the way that i envision myself which i'm super excited about i yeah. love like i love change i love everything about creative world and I want to touch all of it. So I'm hope 25. I'm hoping <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll look for you and when, when yeah. you hit 25 and see what she's Definitely. doing now Can in the last, in the last couple of minutes, I want to give you an opportunity just to tell everybody about your line random effects, right. And 
what it's about. You kind of touched on it um, a little bit when you were telling your story about, about, you know, getting into fashion, but give us a little bit of an idea of what this brand is and, and where you're yeah. taking it. Um, I call it genderless streetwear. So this is a brand I made in college uh, when I was really in depth with it. Uh, so yeah, it's unisex streetwear. It's very avant-garde, uh, one of a kind. I kind of look at it as moving art. So okay. um, when people have a piece on, it is there's sculpture to it. There's layers. Yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of undergarments, so I won't be making sweatshirts, t-shirts. I'm more of outer garden, out outer, outer garments. garments so. I'll be making very big coats, crazy mm. jeans. Um, so yeah, I I I think it, what is it like four years I've been doing this. Um, mm. I was in a couple stores in New York, but now I might be opening up a new store. Maybe you'll see. Nice, <laughs> um, nice, yeah. awesome. So I'm super excited. Um, and you can find everything on my website, www.randomeffects with an A.com. Nice. Uh, and listen, I'm affordable. I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at the spender if I was trying to buy something. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not dropping a thousand dollar price tag on these yeah. pieces. Yes, right. they took me a long time, but we need to be reasonable. We're all broke here. So, <laughs> right. Especially today, right? There are things yeah. are tight out there. And oh, yeah. you want to, you want to give people access to, to be able to wear things that make a statement that reflect who they are. Right. That, that also yeah. get, get your work out there. So it's just not sitting in your studio. Right. Yeah. There's even sometimes I'll rent out a space and I'll just do a, uh, a crazy sale pop up just to get rid of these things. Like right. I want, I want my fashion to be affordable, and I want the coolest people to rock it out and feel like themselves in my garments. Yeah, and another another big aspect of your work, I I think I was reading and and seeing is like a sustainability kind oh, yeah, of aspect <laughs> yeah. to to it. Right, most of the work or all of it is upcycled and kind of saved from the trash bin right and you and you redo it yeah so I'll take um recycled fabrics I'll take recycled garments anything up secondhand which we're all doing right now you know yeah I feel like not to be that girl I feel like I kind of did it first <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for so long but anyway besides the point so yeah I try to be resourceful and not use new things because uh, yeah. one that's always the money and two we have so many cool fabrics and cool jackets that were already made why and I just I'm like let me just manipulate it I mm -hmm. kind of make them my own so mm -hmm. that's another mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I always say up unisex streetwear, that's streetwear. Always yeah the yeah and everybody I was so looking cool. at Jordan's site and the work is really awesome. It's colorful. There's texture. There's sculpture. Um, really great lines and movement to the pieces. Um, and she's creating this all from already existing things and turning it into something that is totally new. Um, she has some information on her website about how much, how much cloth, how much fabric and clothing, right? And um, articles that we toss out into the into the trash pile every year it's an amazing number um, yeah. and being able to to vi vision what these things that are that we're done with can then become um, is just an amazing talent an amazing gift and I really want everybody to go check out check out the work or all of these pieces because of the nature of what they are one of a kind yeah um I just don't like a uh, piece would take me a day and a half I don't really have time to make two of them unless it's right. requested okay so yeah so pretty <laughs> much to... like what is that like if you're on the if you're on the website and you see something that's for sale that's generally like the only one that that is there so if you purchase that it is like purchasing an original piece of work right an original yeah. artwork yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So Jordan, thank you so much for sharing your story, um, encouraging people to follow their gut, right? And to kind of quiet down all of the voices that uh, want to distract us from doing that. Um, and also sharing about your vision for fashion and 
um, what is possible in in that industry that is mostly all about new shit right and not yeah. and not really about how can we rebirth something so this was a really great conversation i really appreciate it everybody this is jordan princiata and um i'm gonna have all of her information her links and everything like that in the show notes so that you can click on over there and get yourself something really awesome stuff um, but until next time everybody you've been listening to the bold creators collective podcast and i'll see you on the other side bye see you